Um, my personal definition of science fiction, and it's not just my personal, I got it from a number of other authors, is that, um, I mean, science fiction and fantasy are both ways of looking at how the world could have been different, so either in the past or the future. And um, so, like, they're, they're partly the same thing, where you insert some, uh, some characteristic into the world that didn't exist, doesn't exist, and uh, and see how see how it changes society. So it's a very large scale view of the world of how society changes if certain conditions are different. Um, I have a largely political definition of intelligence because. I come from India and I'm from a minority community called Dalit. And both in India and in the United States, there are all these stereotypes that minorities especially suffer from, where people think that there are some people who are inherently not intelligent because they're not doing well at school or their community doesn't have too many high achievers. And I am inherently against that definition of intelligence. Like, I do not believe that you have an inherent intelligence, or I don't believe people inherit intelligence. Like, if your parents did great things in life, you will automatically do great things in life, and somebody whose parents did not, or they don't have high education in the family, has inherently less intelligence. I don't believe that. So I think intelligence is also a large, largely dependent on culture and education and di many different experiences. So intelligence is an expression rather than something inherent to a person. Um, God, I am afraid that climate change will go out of hand. That is one thing I'm really afraid of. Um, I'm afraid of surveillance. Um, I am really afraid of deep fakes, and have you even seen the recent deep fakes that are coming out of China, the deep fake apps, which are apparently in the public domain, and they're very effective, and it's like kind of horrifying the number of things people can do in their personal lives with that. Um, yeah. I mean, I... I am an early adopter of technology, I guess, and I am tremendously open to it. So I don't even remember writing by hand. I have always written on a computer, and I don't think I can write. Like, I, I, I have a pretty good handwriting, but I can't write in handwriting. Like, I have to see my writing in type. And yeah, so I, I like writing on that fluid medium where I can delete and add words, and I don't write in a notebook. I read ebooks all the time, and I would not be reading as much if I wasn't reading ebooks because, I mean, I, I've traveled a lot in life. I would not be able to travel with a physical library. Oh, totally. Oh, yes. I mean, I have written an experimental medium before, like poetry, and in poetry and experimental writing, there are so many different influences you can sometimes bring in, and I mean, why not things written by an AI? I mean, I, I love things that people do with the neural networks. It's amazing, and yes, yes, sure. This is interesting. So the thing is, there are certain authors who I wish I was a better fan of because Sometimes their skills are great and their politics are terrible. Like people like H.P. Lovecraft, and I mean, I wouldn't mind an AI writing Lovecraftian stories. I mean, I, I, I like Lovecraft stories. I don't like the man himself. Replace him with an AI. That's great. <laughs> I mean, I am a huge fan of neural net, so that I... I would like more people to understand how big data works and how 
big data an analysis is doing great things in literature, in the arts, and yeah. So I was asked to write a story on artificial intelligence and I have not written many science concept stories before. I've mostly written history and politics related stories. So I read up a lot on AI development and AI future predictions because this is a far future story. And then I also read up on other sciences because in this story, it's a post-apocalyptic earth, like so it's the same earth, but there are there's a different species after the destruction of the current human species. So I looked up things like climate change, I looked up things like how say the dinosaurs were destroyed and what are the possibilities of that happening. And then in this world, they have an AI God, like there's an AI that has been left over that these people think is God. So I also wanted to look at how religion is formed and um, so this AI God is not fully benevolent because the AI God is controlled by a set of priests and these priests are the only people giving it input. And with that, I wanted to look at the concept of whether artificial intelligence in our world is beneficial or not, which depends a lot on who has the control over it. So things like surveillance devices, like at the hands of governments, they're oppressive, but at the hands of many other organizations, they can also give you safety. And um, so, I mean, there are, no, there are no answers in that because, I mean, fiction doesn't really give you answers. Fiction gives you things to think about, I hope.